Learning VOR navigation is a rite of passage for student pilots, and for many, especially those of us coming up in the GPS age, it can feel like being made to eat one's vegetables. With the accuracy and ubiquity of the GPS system now, is it really necessary to keep learning how to use VORs? VOR is a ground-based system. Transmitters located either on an airport or in other areas broadcast a signal which our receivers help us navigate off of. Like any ground-based system, it's susceptible to line of sight. If we're high enough to have line of sight with the station and we're not further outside its service volume, more on this in a bit, we can receive the signal. But if we get down low, terrain or other obstructions can block the signal. This is where GPS comes in, with its orbital satellites able to maintain line of sight with our aircraft no matter where we are. It's not my intention to be an alarmist, but GPS systems aren't without their own risks of going offline. The military can and does sometimes block out signals in certain areas, though these planned outages are typically broadcast via the NOTAM system. GPS spoofing is becoming more of a concern, and since GPS is fundamentally a military system, disruptions due to global frictions are a possibility too. The FAA recognizes these risks, and so even though they're decommissioning many old VOR stations, they are keeping up a strategic network of them. The decision on where to keep stations in place has to do with the transmitter service volume we talked about. We use the VOR network to navigate along airways like Victor 536 between the Sheridan and Gillette VORs. When we're flying along an airway like this, we're guaranteed signal coverage from at least one of the VORs as long as we're above a certain altitude. In this case, it's 7,000 feet. But sometimes we'll want to navigate between VORs that aren't connected by airways. What if we want to fly between the Sheridan VOR here and the Miles City VOR to the northeast? Can we navigate between these two VORs, a distance of 104 miles, without being on a Victor Airway? VORs have a mandated service volume, depending on how high above the transmitter the aircraft is flying. Here are the service volumes of the Sheridan and Miles City VORs. If we're trying to fly the 104 mile direct distance between them, there will be a point where we're more than 40 miles from either station and may lose signal coverage. While the FAA phases out stations, they're also strategically keeping some in place. They're also strategically keeping some in place, as we said, and strengthening their service volumes in many cases. If you've looked closely at an IFR and route chart in the last five or so years, you may have seen the MON acronym on some airports, standing for Minimum Operational Network. Here it is at Waterville Airport in Maine. What this means is that this airport is part of the network that allows any IFR flight to navigate to it and land using just terrestrial navigation like VOR ILS. There are two stations, the Augusta and Bangor VORs near it that allow for this. Their service volumes are enhanced. Here they are compared to the Sheridan VOR service volume. Essentially, if you're at least 5,000 feet above the transmitter height and you're no further than 100 miles from these stations, you'll receive signal. These special VOR stations are spread out in such a way that their 100 mile service volume at those altitudes overlap, as you can see here in the Northeast region. This overlap is the same across the US, such that at no point, as long as you're 5,000 feet above transmitter height, will you not be able to receive some VOR and fly no more than 100 miles to it and then execute an instrument approach off of it and another terrestrial nav aid like an ILS or localizer. So in the event of a sudden and unexplained GPS disruption, an IFR flight can navigate and land. What are the odds of such a disruption? That's not for me to say other than to inform that the FAA's use of the minimum operational network allows for emergency use of VORs to navigate and land under IFR. And like all emergencies, we as pilots should be training on VOR usage in the event we need it. VOR training is something we pride ourselves on at Flight Insight, and it's incorporated into the full training program on both the IFR course as well as the Private Pilot Online Ground School. Check those out today at the link here and in the description.